The SEC and Gary Genser are going after Ethereum, looking to classify it as a security and investigating the Ethereum Foundation. And Coinbase announces they are working with BlackRock and Securitize for the tokenization of investment funds on the Ethereum blockchain. And Fed Chair Jerome Powell foresees three rate cuts this year. What does it mean for Bitcoin and the markets? We're going to break this down and much more. Let's get into it. Welcome to the Thinking Crypto Podcast, your home for cryptocurrency news and interviews. If you are new here, please hit that subscribe button as well as the thumbs up button and leave a comment below. If you're listening on a podcast platform such as Spotify or Apple, please leave a five-star rating and review. It supports the podcast and it doesn't cost you anything. Well, folks, let's start with the price of Bitcoin. Bitcoin today saw a huge bounce, huge green candle on the daily chart. It's currently sitting at $67,684. And we saw the DXY started forming a red candle on the daily chart. This is what we want to see. We've been talking about it over the past couple of weeks. We want to see that DXY, the dollar currency index, start to break downwards because we know the correlation is that is very bullish for risk assets like Bitcoin, altcoins, and even the stock market. So this is a good sign, but we don't want to get ahead of ourselves. This needs to prove itself. We've seen fake outs in the markets before. So let it keep breaking down. And I expect Bitcoin and altcoins to keep moving if the DXY continues downwards. But great to see that red candle forming on the daily chart for the DXY. And we got news from the Fed today. Uh, Jerome Powell spoke about what they are planning to do with the rate cuts. He foresees three rate cuts this year, but envisions fewer cuts in the future. Now, what have I been telling you guys? Potentially, there's a scenario here that markets are front running the rate cuts because historically, based on data now, when the Fed cuts rates, that means things are bad. Something is breaking. And when they cut rates, we see the markets start to tank and they have a huge correction. That doesn't mean history will repeat, but the data going back uh, for decades shows these. this is the fact that this is something we can anticipate. So my thesis, in which I had put together in a newsletter, is that markets are front running these rate cuts because they know the correction's coming. And um, Bitcoin is correlated to the stock market, and uh, we're going to see both of them rise at the same time. Now, the other factor I threw in there is I was expecting the rate cuts to come later in the year after the elections, because I don't think the Fed wants to do anything that will affect the elections, and it may show any type of favorability. Plus, Biden, as you can imagine, wants the economy to look as best as possible. And the stock markets are ripping, even though there are layoffs and much more going on. So it's a very unique situation. And uh, I have my plan at which points I'll, I'll be taking profits. And I'm sticking to that because this year is very strange, folks. Uh, you got the elections, you got the happening, obviously record inflations, rates have been going up. But the Fed said they're not, they're not raising rates. We're, we're pretty much done raising. Um, they just have to cut. But the problem is when they cut historically is that big correction, but then the eventually leads to cheaper capital because of lower rates and the money printer starts. So there's going to be that period of uh, bottoming out from the dump that we usually see and then back to bull market because the money printer will be on. So um, this is a very strange year. Maybe we see something new. Maybe uh, Bitcoin and the stock market do correct at the first rate cut. And it's not as bad as we anticipate. And then they turn on the money printer very soon. And that keeps the momentum going. I don't know. Oh, I don't have a crystal ball. But these are things to think about. And this is why you have to look at the market holistically. So we shall have to wait and see. Now, let's take a look at what are the top trending tokens on social media. This data is brought to you by Santiment. If you'd like to sign up for a Santiment account, link will be in the description. You can use the code THINKINGCRYPTO to get a discount, folks. Um, I have a premium account, and I get really great data and insights on here. I've shared some of this on the shows as well as in my newsletter. So leading the social mentions are Ethereum, uh, which is at number one. And this is because of the big news of the SEC going after Ethereum. We're going to talk about that right after this. Uh, coming in at number two is Nifty X Protocol Shroom, which is the ticker symbol for the token. At number three is Solana. And at number four is Solana-based meme coin Slurf. Now, these all have positive sentiments, um, so that's something to note. Stacks, which is the STX token, also has positive sentiment. They are a smart contract layer two solution for Bitcoin. 
Uh, Ondo comes in here at number six. Uh, you have Amp at number seven. Rune or Thorchain at number eight. Uh, Scale Network, SKL, never heard of it, but it comes in at nine. And then Mobile Coin, wow, Return of Mobile Coin, I haven't heard about that in a long time, comes in at 10. So those are your top trending tokens. And like I said, ETH is trending heavily here, and we're going to talk about that news, folks. Here's the news. Um, the SEC expands push to make Ethereum a security. This is being reported by Forbes Crypto. Subpoenas sent to three well-known crypto companies asking for docs slash records about the Ethereum Foundation. Wow, folks, this is what I've been hinting at for a long time when we've been talking about the Ethereum ETF, that Gary Gensler refuses to echo the statements of his predecessors, Jay Clayton and Bill Hinman, even before Congress, right? Patrick McHenry grilled him. Is Ethereum a security? He did not want to answer, and he doesn't bring up Ethereum at all, folks. So right away, you know something's up. So let me give you some details here as to what's happening. So the Ethereum Foundation, the Swiss nonprofit organization at the heart of the Ethereum ecosystem, is facing questions from an unnamed state authority, according to the group's website's GitHub repository. The confidential inquiry comes during a time of Ethereum's technology and at a possible inflection point for its native asset ETH, which many American investment companies are seeking to offer as an exchange-traded fund. The SEC has slow walked their efforts despite recently approving a series of Bitcoin ETFs. Now, Fortune also mentioned that th there's a, a straight-up campaign from Gary Gensler and the SEC to make Ethereum a security. Now, I tweeted out about this and um, it actually got some traction here. I did a, a roundup of all the facts around Ethereum and the things that you need to know. So first is that Bill Hinman, under Jay Clayton's uh, approval, gave a speech back in 2018, 2019, I believe, saying Ethereum is not a security. However, he had major conflicts of interest because he was getting paid by a law firm, Simpson Thatcher, which was part of the Enterprise Ethereum Alliance clear conflict, right? And even the SEC's ethics office warned him about this. We were only able to get this information because of Empower Oversight and the FOIA request they did. They are currently suing the SEC again to get additional documentation on those conflicts and communications. And obviously through the Ripple lawsuit, where the Ripple t legal team uh, you know, brought in Hinman and all these things and what communications were made. And the reason why these two things are correlated is ETH and XRP were competing for the number two spot. So there was a battle. So clearly, uh, you know, if you take one token over the other, you're showing favoritism, right? You're picking winners and losers. That's not what the SEC should be doing. Now, the other factor is the Ethereum network switched from proof of work to proof of stake which of course changes the thesis that Hinman and Clayton based their analysis on to give Ethereum a non-security classification. Now, to be clear, I believe Ethereum is not a security. I believe the SEC has not provided the guidelines. This is what we've been waiting for, right? And why Congress needs to act. This whole thing is a mess. We need clarity. It is a dumpster fire, folks. And number three, Gary Genser, as stated, refuses to echo the statements of Hinman and Clayton that uh, Ethereum is not a security. Um, he was grilled before Congress. He doesn't want to answer. And of course, I, I've been telling you guys that Gary's most likely going to take the Ethereum ETF situation to the courts, even if he loses, because he has a lot to lose um, when it comes to if he approves Ethereum spots ETF. It means it's not a security. It means uh, it gives the open door to the other altcoins. And they, of course, are trying to block this as much as possible. And recently, we had talked about it. Uh, CFTC Chair Rostin Benham spoke before Congress, highlighting the difference in the views of the CFTC and the SEC. Obviously, the CFTC views this as a commodity, and he was saying the SEC is on the fence, and he's trying to work with them about that. So, I mean, you got these two agencies battling about this. And if you saw my interview published this morning with Chris Giancarlo, former CFTC chairman, and we touch on this subject of the nonsense around this. And of course, Gary Gensler and the SEC approved Prometheum's license to custody Ethereum as a security. And I had Aaron Kaplan on the podcast for the interview. He was reiterating Gary's statements that all coins are digital asset securities. So another signal here that uh, Gary is trying to make everything outside of Bitcoin a security. So uh, once again, Forbes is reporting that this is, is something that's happening. And uh, look, the only way I see this can be stopped is 
uh, Congress really needs to act. I do believe the industry will sue the hell out of the SEC and Gary Genser if he continues this attack because of all the hypocrisy, lies, and inconsistency coming out of the SEC. The SEC caused this confusion, folks. Now, the, the other thing to keep in mind, uh, New York Attorney General uh, Letitia James, I believe her name is, when they went after KuCoin Exchange, they had listed Ethereum as a security. This was back in March of 2023. And they stated that Ether is a security because of the ICO. And of course, a friend of the podcast, attorney Fred Rispoli, he had sued the SEC asking for clarity on Ethereum. Is it a security or not? Tell us, right? They responded, we haven't made a decision yet. What a dumpster fire we are dealing with here. But once again, for the record, I don't believe Ethereum is a security. I believe the SEC needs to update the Howey test. This way, all the different tokens, uh, whether it be XRP, uh, Avalanche, uh, HBAR, uh, Algorand, Ethereum, all need to go through that test. But on its face, I don't think Ethereum is a security given how the network has evolved. But the problem is Bill Hinman should have gave that clarity that he put together for the entire market, right? The framework for the entire market versus just saying, Ethereum specifically is not security. And that's where this whole thing started going downhill. What a mess. Now, remember, Gary, when he was at MIT, the videos are circulating. He said Ethereum was not a security, right? So he has said this in the past. Now, quite a few folks are coming out talking about this news. And of course, it's big. It has huge implications. Patrick McHenry, the man who asked Gary Gensler, is Ethereum a security? He tweeted out the following. Reports indicate Gary Gensler is moving to unilaterally classify ETH as a security. This is contrary to the CFTC's assessment and the SEC's prior actions. Congress decides the SEC's jurisdiction and budget. Chair Gensler doesn't get to make it up as he goes. Well, Congressman Patrick McHenry, he has been doing that. So I tweeted at him uh, in response and I said, Congressman McHenry, it's time to subpoena Gary and get the two crypto bills passed in the House to put the mess the SEC has created to an end. You got to take action. Words are not going to help here. Now, Brian Contents, who I've had on the podcast, he's a former CFTC chairman. He worked with Chris Giancarlo, in fact. He's now global head of policy at A16Z. Uh, he tweeted out a great thread here. He said, reminder, when the SEC allowed ETH futures ETFs to trade on its regulated security exchanges, it explicitly acknowledged the status of the underlying ETH as being a non-security and outside of its jurisdiction. Importantly, this ETF approval decision in October 2023 occurred well after Ethereum changed to proof of stake in September of 2022, meaning that to the SEC, ETH in its present state as of October 2023 was not a security. These are key facts, folks. This is why I'm saying Ethereum is not a security and that Gary Genser, he's going to get sued because of Bill Hinman's statements in the past, plus they approved the futures, right? They went through to all these different things and approved it in the state of being proof of stake. He says, if the SEC had any doubt about the regulatory treatment of ETH in October 2023, it wouldn't have approved the ETF. If ETH were in fact a security, then the CFTC listed futures contracts on which the ETFs were based would be illegal as any derivative on ETH would be considered sec security features contracts and subject to different rules listed on different exchanges and subject to joint SEC slash CFTC jurisdiction. See the mess the SEC has created, folks? Uh, moreover, if ETH were a security, then the ETH futures ETF would be an illegal instrument. The SEC cannot approve an illegal instrument to trade over a national securities exchange. It will be interesting to watch what, if any, excuse the SEC uses if it were to delay or deny an ETH ETF given it has already informed the market on ETH being outside its jurisdiction. The SEC's conduct is refusing to acknowledge these facts is causing confusion and actively harming the public. So he's absolutely right here. Adam Cochran, I believe senior counsel at Synthetics, he said, there you go, confirmed it's Gary on a fishing expedition to try and say proof of stake is a security. And all I can say is bring it on. Go on, Gary, file this claim. Let's have the courts deciding and get precedent on the books once and for all. And while you're recovering from your Ripple case, I'd encourage you to read part three of is Ethereum a security.com outlining why proof of stake isn't a security. So 
as I said here, folks, the industry is going to sue the hell out of Gary Genser. And he's, I don't know what he's doing here. There's, there's Maybe he has something up his sleeve, but I don't think so. There's just too much history. This could be a smokescreen. Maybe he's just causing confusion to delay the Ethereum ETF saying, look, we don't know, right? So it's just, he's just delaying and, and uh, doing whatever Elizabeth Warren wants him to do. So Paul Grewal, chief legal officer at Coinbase, weighed in on this saying, Sigh. Again, with the ETH misinformation as we await a decision on Ethereum ETPs. Okay, let's talk about some basic facts about Ethereum. Millions of Americans hold ETH. It has been vital to crypto since its 2015 launch, and ETH is a commodity, not a security. The SEC has taken this position for years. Now, he gave some great examples here. He said, first, senior SEC officials like Bill Hinman, <laughs> although I wouldn't want to use this as an example given his conflicts. Um, he said, uh, in example two or exhibit B, before he was SEC chair, Gary Genser himself testified before Congress that ETH is not a security. See his testimony. Exhibit C, and even uh, very recently, the SEC's trial lawyers continue to compare ETH to Bitcoin. Uh, so he pr continues to provide additional items, talking about the CFTC, the futures, and so forth. So Gary's going to have problems. But once again, this could be a smokescreen just to delay the ETF to say, we don't know what we're doing. Now, Miles Jennings of A16Z tweeted the following. He said, recent events have changed my mind about working with former SEC crypto enforcement lawyers. Anyone still working in that division is complicit in the ongoing abuses of power. Debtbox won't be the last example. We won't work with law firms that one day hire these people. Wow. So the people who are working with scumbag regulator Gary Genser, um, they're going to have a, a hard time uh, working with folks in the industry and other industries moving forward. Um, in an age of social media and, and with the web, uh, with media, their names are going to get tarnished. And uh, this is probably why we're seeing a lot of turnover at the SEC. People don't want to be involved in this nonsense. But folks, what a mess, right? And uh, Ethereum, uh, you know, I don't know what Gary's up to, but I, I hope that there's no epic collapse because it would be very detrimental to the market. I tweeted about this. Uh, this could turn into a massive Category 5 tornado that uh, is going to ruin a lot of government officials, the SEC, Ethereum, and so forth, uh, because of all the, the things that happened going back to Bill Hinman. And then Gary's hypocrisy and lies, it's just snowballing into uh, this massive disaster. Uh, so we're going to have to wait and see. I, this could be, once again, a smokescreen that Gary's using just to delay the Ethereum ETF. Now, quick word from our sponsor, and that is Uphold, a great platform that you can buy Bitcoin and all the top altcoins. You can also trade precious metals such as gold, silver, palladium, and platinum. Uphold has proof of reserves. They don't commingle or lend out your funds. I've been using this platform since 2018. If you'd like to learn more about Uphold, check out the link in the description. All right, folks, yesterday we talked about the news of BlackRock tokenizing an investment fund on the Ethereum blockchain, and they're working with Securitize, which is uh, helping people to tokenize everything and anything on the blockchain. Well, Coinbase, they tweeted out today, we are excited to announce that Coinbase has been chosen as a key infrastructure provider for BlackRock and Securitize tokenized investment fund. This partnership reflects our commitment to connecting institutions to crypto and demonstrates our ability to provide the necessary technology and products to support the rapidly growing tokenization sector. So this comes as no surprise because Coinbase is already been working with BlackRock for institutional custody and trading. Um, this was news that came out, uh, you know, what was it, late last year, I believe it was, and, you know, for the ETF launches and so forth. And this is a powerhouse coming together, right? Coinbase, BlackRock, and Securitize to do tokenization. And as Larry Fink has been saying for a while, tokenization is a future of finance. They are moving all in, and they are doing it on the Ethereum blockchain. So the, what an interesting dynamic, right? BlackRock wants the Ethereum ETF. They have the Bitcoin ETF. They're tokenizing on Ethereum. And uh, Gary Genser is trying to say Ethereum is a security now and trying to block the Ethereum ETF, investigating the Ethereum Foundation. <laughs> you can't make this stuff up. Now, another fact that uh, one user here on Twitter X found uh, by the name of Summers Things, and he provided the link to the CFTC government website. Apparently, Coinbase Derivatives LLC quietly filed certifications with the CFTC to list U.S. regulated futures for Dogecoin, Litecoin, and Bitcoin Cash. 
Uh, I get Dogecoin because you know there's people that are going to trade it, but Litecoin and Bitcoin Cash this feels like a 2017 lineup, right? But maybe this is just a starting point. Um, we'll see what they decide to do. Summer says they filed them on March 7th, and surprisingly, nobody seemed to notice. Futures are set to start trading on April 1st if there are no objections from the CFTC. So that's interesting. I, I'm, I'm surprised they didn't have an included XRP, given the, uh, but maybe they're like, hey, look, the lawsuit is still going on with Ripple, so it's too risky to try to do stuff like that. But they already relisted it for trading, so I don't know. And then look, they bought Litecoin on here and Bitcoin Cash. So whoever came up with this decision or idea <laughs> didn't really think this through, maybe? I, I, I don't know. It just seems strange. Now, uh, Fed Chair Jerome Powell, just to add some context of things he said today, and if you haven't seen, once again, my interview with Chris Giancarlo today, please check it out. We talk about uh, Fed Chair Jerome Powell's recent comments about the, their, the, the digital dollar is nowhere close to being uh, developer or live. And uh, Jerome Powell doubled down on that. Here are some quotes reported by Eleanor Terry to Fox Business. Fed Chair Jerome Powell addressed CBDCs today saying, I haven't at all in my own mind made a decision that the U.S. needs a central bank digital currency. He also said the Fed is a long, long way from proposing a CBDC and it's wrong to say the Fed is working on a CBDC. Now, I was born at night, but I wasn't born last night. And I, uh, you know, we've seen lies and smoke and mirrors. So could he be telling the truth? Sure. Could he be lying through his teeth? Absolutely, right? We've seen this from different government, government officials. They could absolutely be working and piloting different things. Um, and in fact, you know, Chris Giancarlo uh, of the Digital Dollar Project, uh, he's talked about different conversations they've had with the Fed, piloting and so forth. So I don't know if I believe that this it's wrong to say the Fed is working on a CBDC. I think they've already started the conversations and maybe piloting stuff. Uh, they may not have something that's production or ready to go or even flushed out, but I don't, something smells fishy here. Uh, my gut tells me he's, he's smoke screening a bit here, but we'll have to wait and see. Uh, nevertheless, the future is digital. Uh, many countries are building CBDCs and digital currencies to the U.S., We'll have to find a solution, whether that's stable coins, a CBDC or whatever, in order to uh, remain competitive and keep the dollar as the world reserve currency. They're, they're going to have to start working on one. And uh, look, it has to be aligned to our the, the Constitution to maintain our rights. Now, folks, a friendly reminder, I will be in Washington, D.C. for the D.C. Blockchain Summit 2024. This is being put together by the Chamber of Digital Commerce, Perry Ann Boring and Friends. And uh, I will be there for the summit day as well as the education day. Now, if you don't want to attend the summit day, it is a bit more expensive. You can attend the education day. And um, I'll be there for both. We'd love to meet up with you. And we're going to be meeting with different representatives, members of Congress, uh, regulators, and so forth. And there's going to be some great speakers who are going to be there, um, members of Congress like Mike Flood, uh, Senator Kristen Gillibrand, Caitlin Long, Cynthia Lummis, Hester Peirce, Patrick McHenry, Fred Thiel, and, and many other great speakers, guys. So once again, I would love to uh, see you all in person. I'll be there and um, we'll certainly be doing some coverage and podcasting as well. So uh, once again, if you'd like to attend, check out the link in the description. You can get a discount by using the code Thinking Crypto. And uh, once again, you don't have to attend for both days. You, you can come to the summit and the education day or just the education day if you want. So uh, looking forward to seeing some of you there. Thank you for watching and listening. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the five star in the podcast platforms, sign up for my free email newsletter, link in the description. Follow me on all social platforms as well. Thank you guys. And I'll talk to you all later.